But now I'm going to introduce Heather Mann as our speaker. So she's really dear to my heart, and I'm so excited to have her here. technology and information, it seems as if an increasing percent of the population is feeling as alone and isolated as ever. I know these are definitely subjects I have had my fair share of struggles with. I was raised in a loving family, but was a perfectionist from early on. I never seemed to measure up to my own standards. When I was 10, my dad went to jail for something that he didn't do. His return 13 months later was pretty rough. My mom had become accustomed to the life of a single parent. And when my dad came back, he tried to jump into the same parental role as if nothing had changed. This brought much turmoil, arguing, and fighting to our house. I had a lot, of, a lot of difficulty talking about the things that were bothering me with other people. I spent my last year of elementary school and the first couple years of middle school just taking everything in and trying to sort through it alone. I was unhappy, and loneliness was continu continually increasing. Needless to say, this was incredibly ineffective. I began cutting in 8th grade as a way to cope with everything that had been building. Cutting along with other self-injurious behaviors became a way of life for me that continued through half of my senior year of high school. These behaviors were incredibly isolating, yet I clung to them firmly and struggled to see life as ever being any different. My friends knew what was going on, but many of them simply did not understand. <laughs> Typically, individuals who have not been directly affected by self-injury often do not get it, and this certainly includes family members and friends alike. These misunderstandings lead to even more feelings of shame and embarrassment, which I definitely experienced. My parents' initial reaction as they were informed of my self-injury was, do you realize how this makes us look? I was somewhat shocked by that response, but have come to realize that they simply did not understand. My struggles were not all about them, but parents seem to feel like they are supposed to take responsibility. Yes, our relationship played a significant part in this, but it was not their fault. This began a continuous communication battle for us but the more patient I am with them, the more patient they are with me, and the more I open up and explain to them, the more they are able to understand. Loved ones definitely can play a part in the development of self-injury, but they are also a crucial part of recovery if we let them be. My friend from a different area, but with similar struggles, once wrote to me, I am appalled by the lack of respect shown by the majority of the student body. Student body. Needless to say, I will not be wearing short sleeves because I am very com in uncomfortable in that environment. Unfortunately, she is not the only one who has had these fears and experiences. However, as we continually bring these issues into the light, the stigmas related to these problems can eventually be eliminated. It will be a process, but every one of us can do our part in helping others understand what this is. The same friend also questioned, am I too much? Was I even meant to live in this constant and unbearable pain? I don't know. I have not lost all hope. I am just sick of living like this. Her questions and thoughts were quite similar to ones that I had and many others do as well. However, I thankfully now know these answers. No, she is not too much. Neither am I and neither are you. Oftentimes we may think our struggles are insignificant or unimportant, but that is not and has never been true. If we let things build up, even the little things that may initially seem silly, it won't take long before becoming overwhelmed. But if we tackle everything as it comes, we can help prevent that sinking feeling. Her next question, was I even meant to live in this constant and unbearable pain? Well, none of us were, live, were meant to live in the unbearable pain forever. However, I do not think it is an accident that we face the struggles we do. Life would be pretty boring if we weren't faced with some challenges, but it, it is in overcoming them step by step that we begin to grow and change. Her last statement was, I have not lost all hope. I am just sick of living like this. I know I can definitely identify with this. There were so many times that I wanted to change, but just wish I knew how to live differently. Last winter, I was blessed with the opportunity to participate in the Life Hurts God Heals Recovery Group for Teens at Emmanuel Advent Christian Church. This group was definitely a substantial part of my recovery. It took several weeks of silently attending LHGH, but I eventually began to feel comfortable and safe enough to open up to peers who were facing and trying to understand their own struggles as well. The friendships and accountability formed there are definitely powerful tools. It was also there where I was really able to understand what a personal relationship with Jesus Christ really was. I attended church my entire life because I was supposed to, but now I continue to go because I truly want to be there. 
I understand that God has a plan for my life and that the struggles I have faced were not in vain. There is a song by Joel and Jana called Anyway, and part of the lyrics say, I wanted you to spell it out in the sky. I wanted you to part the sea. I wanted you to change this because I didn't want the change to start with me. Holding so tightly with both fists, couldn't walk away from this because living with my broken lips was easier than letting go. I can definitely relate to this song because I wanted so much time stuck in my own way and, waste, and in my own problems and simply thought that it was easier than letting go. Letting go is definitely a process, but waiting for things to be fixed before my eyes was unreasonable. Even though I made the decision to surrender my problems to Jesus, it was something that must be done daily. He is there to take our burdens willingly, but we first must ask him to. It's not easy, but it's so worth it. I have not cut in over 10 months, and I am now a psychology freshman at Huston University. I'm very involved in swimming in Campus Crusade for Christ. I'm continu continually learning how to take everything day by day, and it is really quite perfect to be imperfect. Joel and Jana's song mentioned above goes on to say, Teach me about surrender, show me how, so I'll remember. These lyrics reinforce the truth that you do not have to let anyone's choice define your life, but it is whether or not you choose to get up after each fall and continue to learn and grow, filling God's plan for your life.